Hello everybody, welcome to Proline's Deliciousness from the World of Art. The protagonist of this episode is Franco Costa Longa, born in Venice in 1933. His childhood is marked by the fact that he lives in the caretaker's house of the Fondazione Querini Stampaglia. This awakens in him a lively interest in the artworks and books of the Library of the Venetians. After working odd jobs, Costa Longa dedicates himself to restoring old prints, antique books, as well as paintings. Most importantly, he is appointed to safeguard the original writings of Rainer Maria Rilke at Duino Castle. During that period, he also pursues courses of fine arts that consequently induces him to embark on his lifelong teaching career. As we all know, actor and formal dominates the art scene in the 50s. Buri's work thus exerts a great influence on Costa Longa's artistic creation and drives him to work on a variety of experiments dealing with non-traditional materials. But probably it's his job as a fine art printer in the lab of Galileo Borin that offers him most opportunities to show off his creative anxiety. His art making initially ventures towards a kind of lyrical abstraction. The famous painter Leone Minassian legitimately sustains that Costa Longa's art is suspended between Vaughan's and Licini's. But things are destined to take a different path. As a matter of fact, his own impressing insight into the techniques and materials paves the way for him to open, together with his friend Mariano Capuzzo, a furniture designer studio. At the beginning of the 60s, an armchair of his won the first prize in a contest held at the fair of Padua. This success opens up new channels to forge a new activity that keeps him engaged for long periods, but above all entices him to explore the use of modern materials. In particular, he realizes works composed of methacrylate hemispheres, which are considered to be one of his trademarks. These art pieces were showcased for the first time in 1967 at the Numero Gallery of Fiamma Vigo. In the same year, he enters into contact with Armando Nizzi of the Synchron Gallery in Brescia, which proves to be the defining moment in his artistic career. This gallery, taking inspiration from an idea embedded in Russian constructivism, aims to spread art not only to a limited number of collectors, but, above all, among the masses. To obtain this aim, artists are requested to create objects with aesthetic function according to the definition of Bruno Munari, collaborator of the gallery. Costa Longa realizes a sphere with a diameter of 30 centimeters that contains a sculpture created by modeling a heated PVC sheet. But it's the encounter with Munari that gives him a kind of illumination. It's Munari that steers him away from the idea that an artist should elaborate a style to which he has to remain faithful for the whole life. This so-called liberation entitles Costa Longa to new possibilities. His idea of composition henceforth lays foundation on the kinetic art and on the use of a recurring single basic element. The kinetic art is a movement that, stemming from the theory of futurism that focused on the incorporation of movement into the artwork, stands out as a source of inspiration from the 20s onwards to a wide range of artists Munari among others. Therefore, an artwork should create an interactive relationship with the viewer who can behold the variations of the same art piece from different angles. In Costa Longa's case, the kinetic art is shown through the employment of hemispheres with a reflecting surface on the inside. When placed in different compositions, they can always generate new visual effects. His art further finds its major fulfillment through the discovery of a particularity. Putting a colorful cylinder at the center of the hemisphere and looking at it vertically, we can notice that its image spreads over the whole surface. Consequently, the chromokinetic 
object is born. The recurrence of this base element gives rise to the development of infinite variations of works of art, including sculptures. One of these works, in 1969, became part of the Peggy Guggenheim collection. The cylinder works ultimately evolved into those entitled gradients of luminosity. In this series, cutting the top of each cylinder at 45 degrees that will be colored afterwards and arranging them according to new planes, the artist can obtain various compositions, each appraised from different standpoints. Costa Longa goes on producing the reflex works in which plates that reflect light are employed. For 50 years, Franco Costa Longa has been one of the major exponents of the kinetic art to which he dedicates himself with a flaming passion. He entirely explores new ways to bring to light the core idea of his art making. Art is a continued discovery of new works. I stop here. Thank you for listening. Don't miss the next episode of Prolines, Deliciousness from the World of Art.